Welcome to the American University in Kosovo. My name is Chris Hall, and I have the honor and the privilege to serve as president of AUK. We are fortunate to have many speakers uh, come to talk to our students and to the wider community in this forum. But today, I believe we are exceptionally lucky to have a visit, once again, from somebody who is a true friend of Kosovo. True friends are friends who are willing to be honest and speak forthrightly to their friends about what perhaps they should be doing. And Peter is here today in his capacity as the international civilian representative, the representative of the international community of the Friends of Kosovo, to talk with us about Kosovo's road ahead at this critical juncture in the country's history. Peter has agreed to take questions afterwards, and I hope we will have a good conversation. I look forward, Peter, to hearing your remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Chris, thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. To <laughs> Great honor uh, once again to come to the uh, University in Kosovo, which uh, I consider um, a, um, an institution of um, academic excellence and a uh, venue for free exchange and debate, critical thinking looking ahead strategically. Um, and I feel very honored that uh, you have uh, kindly thought of me as one of your uh, speakers on the list. Um, indeed, I like to uh, speak plainly and openly. And I hope that, um, ladies and gentlemen, you will uh, appreci appreciate this and that you will also be honest in your uh, giving me your views um, on um, the issues that um, uh, are lying ahead of us. Uh, because indeed, uh, we are in many ways at the crossroads with, uh, with Kosovo. Um, I have now been serving for three years as uh, both as the international civilian representative and as the special representative of the European Union. Um, and I think it's time again to um, take stock of where we are and to um, look forward um, in um, seeing how we can improve things. Um, I should say in passing that I'm very pleased that um, American University students are um, those among those who are taking up uh, internships in my organization, the ICO, they're making an excellent contribution. Uh, and I hope that it will be rewarding for their future careers. Um, I hope that this will uh, be, therefore, a good opportunity to, to reflect a bit um, and to um, discuss the challenges that uh, lie ahead of Kosovo. In the last three years, Kosovo has made important uh, progress in many areas. Immense work has been put into the implementation of President Atasari's uh, comprehensive settlement uh, proposal across society. We have seen the building up of Kosovo's own institution, institutions, plural, a process which I might remind you has taken far longer than in most European countries. So we have been only working on this for three years and uh, in many other countries in Europe it has taken generations to uh, strengthen and improve the democratic institutions that uh, are so uh, beneficial for our future development. Specifically, I've been impressed with the performance of many uh, officials and community leaders in putting into action the decentralization agenda right across the country. New lo local government 
structures have created confidence and have led to the participation and further integration of Kosovo's communities into mainstream institutional life. Every municipality now has more responsibility and in those places where new municipalities have been created, there has been a dramatic change, both in mood and in activity. If you drive through the center of Gratzanica today, it is, and it looks like, it looks much different uh, from when you remember Gratzanica as it looked in 2007. We have seen the institutions of what is still a young country starting to mature. One of the most positive developments in the past period has been the growing self-confidence and influence of independent judicial institutions. The ruling of the Constitutional Court on the logo of prison municipality is a good example of this. Even now, we see that society looks to the Constitutional Court to be the ultimate fount of, for the resolution of disputes. This is a deeply democratic instinct and tells me that Kosovo has a hunger and a desire for the rule of law, for a society in which there will be justice for all. The latest round of elections were the first at the national level since independence. The fact that these were organized and owned by homegrown local institutions is in itself something to recognize. And the election watching missions said that the conduct of the elections was good overall. However, I have to underline that the process saw some very regrettable irregularities in both in, vo in voting and in, count in counting. And this matters. It matters because the conduct of elections is taken in the region and internationally as a symbol and an indication of the nature of society. So persistent irregularities are simply bad publicity for Kosovo for Kosovo and reinforce a negative stereotype. It is creditable, it is creditable that these irregularities were addressed by the Kosovo authorities. In particular, the Central Election Commission, the Election Complaint and Appeals Panel, and the Supreme Court played their respective roles responsibly in accordance with the law. The elections, as we know, have now resulted in a new political landscape. A new coalition government is in place. The Assembly, on the 23rd of February, voted in Mr. Bejet Pachori to become the new president of Kosovo. Maybe we should reflect further on ways to de-link the appointment of the President of Kosovo from the more mundane business of agreeing a coalition government. But this is for later. Mr. Thaci took up his second term as the Prime Minister with a refreshed government. At the same time, there is a new and perhaps more diverse opposition which includes new players, including players from the Kosovo Serb community. I think that Kosovo will benefit from this situation only if we see a constructive approach coming from everyone. The President must strive to express and strengthen the unity of the nation. The job of the government is to produce necessary policies and legislation to explain and win the support for these in the Assembly 
and among the citizens, and then to implement the programs. And the role of the opposition is to hold the government to account, mainly in the, in the assembly, by scrutinizing policies and legislation, and most importantly, presenting credible alternatives. It must do so, ladies and gentlemen, not by staying away through boycott, but by active engagement, by taking a long view of what the country needs, rather than focusing on short-term polit political gains. Citizens have the right to expect these three players to perform their respective roles. And there is no greater honor than to be called to public office by the people. And I hope that in 2011 and beyond, we will see continued efforts from the president, the government, and the opposition to animate a living, breathing democracy in Kosovo. While the political landscape is changing, many challenges, many challenges that Kosovo is facing will remain the same. And the new government needs to tackle them with renewed determination. Here is my perspective on what needs to be gripped and tackled now. First, economic development. Economic development, I'm afraid to say, is all too unpromising. Even with the assistance that the international community has brought to Kosovo over many years, over the last 10 years, the economy remains unproductive and burdened by significant imbalances. The trade deficit is at about 45% of GDP, 